Despite virtually polling at zero, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio says he's in the race for the long run and that voters won't make up their mind until the last minute. Psst, Bill, we all made up our mind a long time ago. We hate you. You're the one person that could lose to Donald Trump in all five boroughs of New York. <laughs> Shh, at least he knows how to treat cops. Marianne Williamson has unveiled her plans for a Secretary of Peace with a Peace Academy to rival West Point and for criminal justice to turn to, quote, healing-oriented approaches. When pressed for details, Williamson directed all questions for specifics to her running mate, My Little Pony, Twilight Sparkle Horse. That's not funny. That's hysterical. <laughs> By the narrowest of margins over the field of Democrats, President Trump won the Iowa State Fair's annual corn poll. Mishearing the news, President Trump immediately <laughs> took the defensive, saying, Look, I don't care what anybody says. There is no tape with a Russian prostitute. Believe me. President Trump also recently expressed interest in buying Greenland, despite the fact that it is supposedly not for sale. To which Trump also responded, Yeah, that's what they told me about the election. And <laughs> <laughs> See, that one was That funny. was good. <laughs> and, and Melania. Joe uh, Biden's wife, and finally, Joe Biden's wife, Jill, told a group of voters in New Hampshire that her husband is the Democrats' best bet to beat Trump. But supporting him might mean having to, quote, swallow a little bit. Uh, yeah, pass. <laughs> Look, I know Biden's been a little too familiar with supporters, maybe a little handsy. No candidate <laughs> is going to expect us to swallow for them. The Trump Report oh starts my. now. <laughs> You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz See, because Marianne Williamson lives in a fair land. Ah, we'll get to it. Hey, welcome to the Trump Report. I'm Christian Blatt, joined by an illustrious panel of Trump Reporters. The one, wow. the only, <laughs> Chelsea Galicia. Hello there. Making your triumphant return. Yes, thank you for having me back. So I guess that means there's nothing, uh, there's no law happening in Los Angeles. You don't need to be in any court. All the courts are just like, oh, we settled everything. We don't, we just don't need you to practice law anywhere. So I'm so glad that the no laws have been broken anywhere. Why, thank you. Yeah, so thank you for, thank you for keeping our courtroom safe. And back from Deutschland, yes. the one, the only, Scott, there's probably a lot of Scott Moore's. There, uh, there That's are why lots. you're S-Man yes, 80. Exactly. But the only Scott Moore we've ever had yes. on this show. There we go. A uh, really important question for you, Scott. How was Angela when oh, you she's, were there? Yeah. She's doing great. Yeah. She sends her regards. She'll be on the show soon, no can doubt. Can we switch anytime lives? We, and anytime you, we want. You can on. go to court and I'll go to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> what about court in Germany? Oh, hey. I had to sign a permit and they said, you know, if you have to go to court, you have to go do it here in Germany. Really? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So look at that. Mm -hmm. Well, go. we appreciate uh, having all of you here, and thanks to uh, everyone who's in the chat. Uh, we'll try and include you in the conversation uh, a little bit later. Uh, I'd like to start off with a little bit of a hypothetical. Oh, I like Scott, hypotheticals. I'll ask you first, Scott. Scott, if I said that your house was just an awful place and that you did a terrible True. job of keeping you know you just kept a poor home yep. uh, would you invite True. me over to a dinner party <laughs> if well, i just cri very publicly criticized, criticized your, your home yeah before yeah and before, then yeah would yeah. you invite me over uh sure after and then and then and then okay make sure the well, house uh, i appreciate that yeah chelsea if I said that your house <laughs> had no right to exist and should be wiped off the face of the earth, would you invite me to your house? Because hmm. I feel like the way this is shaping up is you're both better people than I am. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> well, I would say, no, I would say no to that one, but yes to the other one to prove that my house is... So, amazing that you so there, bad, there's, bad oh, so you'd be like, oh, no, no, Trump. no but, this, but if I said I had amazing. no right to exist. Literally said yeah, wiped off now. the face of the planet. I don't remember hearing anybody say I'm just asking off. about, I'm just talking about, okay, I'm, talking is, about your, I'm talking about your house right now. This is me. This is me. This is not tied into anything in the news. Why would it be that? <laughs> well, okay, it depends. Are you bringing dinner or I'm making the dinner for this dinner party? Because so right. I'm bringing dinner, but it's not vegan. So it was definitely prepared in a kitchen. Where meat was definitely present. <laughs> I didn't bring a meat dish per se, Listen, but it might be contaminated. You could bring the new Impossible Whopper over, and no, I'd but, be happy with that. But it, 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 I don't, I don't have that yet. You know, it's, <laughs> well, it's my nationwide. Burger King, my Burger King doesn't carry it. Uh, it's in this country, right? 
You don't know what Burger King I go to. <laughs> you don't worry about where I go okay, to Burger King. Okay, I'm going to object incomplete hypothetical. So I think that sometimes, you know, manners are very important. And if people speak really? badly manners. about people speak badly about your home, you don't have to let them come over. And so I think that in the case of Ilhan Omar and Tlaib, I, I would say that uh, Israel is perfectly within the right. Like, no, you can't come here. And I think that you know, are pres- countries the same as homes? Well, they do live there, and uh, they have uh, certainly, you know, the idea that well, we believe in free speech in America. It's like that's great. You're not going to America. You, they don't have to follow those rules. A lot of countries don't believe in free speech, at least not to the extent that we do. People have chastised me for saying this on the show, but if people in Canada think that they have the same free speech and freedom of the press, it's more the freedom of the press. They think that they have that. That's great. They can continue to live that way. But like American broadcasts routinely get blacked out, you know, that come over from the border because we talk about things that they they're like, oh no, no, we don't we don't talk about that in the media. So you well, know, look, yeah, know it's that. a little case by case. So I think that uh, I think good for uh, Benjamin Netanyahu for, I said his name wrong, but you know, that guy, <laughs> Bibi. That's because I never say his last name. It's like you and Angela. Mm-hmm. I just call him Bibi. I, sometimes I call him Biebs, but that's the funny mm-hmm. thing. Side side tangent. <laughs> I've got Justin Bieber in my phone as Biebs as well. So I end up talking to them about completely the wrong right. things. You know, it's like Netanyahu's like, why are we talking about Selena Gomez? And look, I get it. I totally yeah. get it. But that is the the way that uh, you know. Look, I, I'm not a particularly smart guy. I just uh, I look at things. I try to make jokes, and four out of five, Chelsea thought we were okay, <laughs> and that's the way I see the situation. But I would like to know how you feel about the situation, Chelsea. The uh, the representatives uh, being told we're going to talk about the initial how they were told that they couldn't uh, they couldn't come to Israel. Uh, the, how, the way in which they were told, or just that that they were we can told. Talk about that, but it's, it's you know, like you can you can cut out the middleman Trump, like you know, or I think Netanyahu probably didn't need any help making his mind up. I mm-hmm. think that that's probably where that was going. And but yeah, I mean, whichever aspect of it. But there's there's the later part of the story that I want to uh, you know sort of the fact that she was then given permission to see her grandmother. Is that part of it? I want to talk about second. But I want to talk about the initial announcement that, like, yeah, you, you two ladies are, are not entitled to uh, come well, here. Well, I, I think for um, a country, in both ways, we try and, like, you know, the, the Israel is the closest thing to the United States that exists in the Middle East. And if... And, and yeah, we, try and find pork chops at Safeway. <laughs> <laughs> it's, believe me, it's and not that, that close. And that I, I hear so often, we support Israel because they're a, a democracy... Right. Um, and I, I guess, can you have democracy that doesn't have free speech? Uh, things start to get kind of sure. Wish well, I, I am not really sure that you can. So for, uh, I mean, I understand your your comparison to a, a personal house and a whole country. I well, think I we're think comparing it, I, I apples and oranges. I think that they're very rude when they've spoken about Israel. And by the way, I, I think Alexandria Ocasio Cortez also should not be allowed there because she's also, you know, she's also spoken out but against here's Israel. The they, question, don't, they don't have to. But let here's you. the question: who who is the one that decides if if you are are critical or critique or you have a suggestion about how a country could improve at what point does somebody say oh no now you're criticizing us and you shouldn't be let in here i think you know i don't often buy into the slippery slope argument argument for why we shouldn't allow things sure um but in this case i can see it very easily being a slippery slope who's the one that decides that somebody is being rude right um and uh, Sure, they said, you know, not nice things. But sometimes, you know, has ever has ever anybody said something to you that wasn't nice, but it was maybe something that you should have heard? Uh, no. First of all, the problem with that hypothesis is you would assume somebody would say something to me that's not nice. So uh, that has never happened in my life. So, but from your hypothetical, sure. But, you know, I mean, I would say that to sort of extend my idea, I think here in the United States that's like, sure, we have... We, we're very proud of our free speech, but if a, a foreign national is applying to come and visit our country, maybe an elected official from another country that we consider to be an ally, if there's a video of them saying, this is not, and I know that this is not what specifically what these two uh, congresspersons said, but this is this is more of a hypothetical. So if you see just an elected official from another country, let's 
let's say the, the United Kingdom. There's a video of them setting the American flag on fire and they say death to America. I'm going to say, no, you can't come here. That's, you know, you, you don't have the right to come here. You know, it's like if you're from this country and you get to say it, it's like, well, I don't like what you're saying, but we kind of have to let you. So I, I can see that. Well, and let, it, are... just let, let us know in the chat what you think oh, about yes, these, these different things. What were you going to say before I ask Scott to weigh in? In, in, in what you said, you know, this place, should, what did you say? Death to, you know, that's a threat. We, we ourselves in the United States as American citizens, we have limitations to our First Amendment rights. I can't threaten, like, that I am about to hurt you. You know, same thing, you can't yell fire in a theater. So there is a limit to your First Amendment sure. right to free speech, even as a citizen in this country. Um, but I, I understand that you don't want, you know, you can well, what literally if it's not be a trying threat to... And it's just America's the devil. That's not really saying death to America. That's saying America's the devil. And I still think, like, well, then this devil doesn't want you to, you know, come worship in my satanic temple I mean, you just stay where you are you don't get to come here that you know I, I i feel like that you're within your rights to have people who speak badly about your country you know it's like to to give someone a, a visa whether it be diplomatic or a tourist visa it's like well it's a, it's a it's a privilege like scott you know you were just over in germany mm -hmm. and uh i think that maybe if you were very well known for saying unkind things about mm -hmm. You know, Angela Merkel. You know, who, which you wouldn't because you're 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 like yes, this. You're close. You're very tight. But just it's more hypothetical. You know, uh, <clears throat> then maybe they would be like, oh yeah, we see that you're here for work, but yeah, we can't let you in. We'll let everybody else you work with in, but not not S Man eighty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We follow we follow that Twitter. <laughs> but uh, what do you think about all this? Um, going with with Chelsea slippery slope. I think uh, one it it's I agree with you, Christian, in the sense that it's up to the country as a sovereign nation to decide who can and cannot come in. However, um, it depends on kind of a multifaceted thing. Was this official business? Was this vacation? Was this visiting family? Was You know, there's a lot of different layers there. And as Chelsea said, who's the one that's deciding what's okay and not okay? And then on the other hand, what has happened in this situation is that it's become politicized and that you have a president getting involved and you're now pitting against Republicans, Democrats, and I'm sure we'll get to it later. And now it's like, oh, now, you know, how can Democrats vote um, and, and say all this stuff and, and you know, vote uh, or, or, you know, Jewish people or people from Israel or whatever vote Democratic. And, you know, it's, it's becoming politicized, which is also not the right way to, to handle it. So there's a lot of different layers to it. But the general is, yeah, I do believe that a country does have a right, but it depends why and how. Because as Chelsea says, you get to a very fine line of people arbitrarily making decisions on who can or can't go based on you know things that are a little bit loose there so well i do agree with that point that it, you know it's like sure you start with this so then what's the next reason why you don't let somebody right over there you know and and what was the you know and, and what are the reasons that they're going for are they going for work are they going to represent somebody are they you know there, there's a lot of different layers when it comes to that too because like you said it's different for me going somewhere for work versus going to visit a family member um maybe who's dying or going to visit yeah. uh, a vacation or you know so there's a lot of different layers there and, and how what has the usage been of the speech has it been advocating violence is it just giving an opinion of just saying you know like trump this is a should whole country you know like what how is it being used so there it's it's not a easy black or white thing to say nuance, it's more of a nuanced sure. gray yeah. area but I think the bigger issue is the fact that it's become politicized, which it never should have been to right. begin with. So. And, you know, it starts with this, and then it could right. turn into, like, well, you're speaking out against the Jewish people. And then mm -hmm. it's like, well, you can't come to Israel if you've publicly said that you don't think Woody Allen made any good movies. Because then they're going to just be <laughs> like, well, no, we can't we can't stand by that. Uh, well, so then the uh, next chapter in the saga would be the tweet that I sent to you uh, before the show, Ryan. A uh, some user on Twitter that uh, I'm not familiar with. His name is Real Donald Trump. <laughs> he wrote, uh, Representative Tlaib wrote a letter to Israeli officials desperately wanting to visit her grandmother. Permission was quickly granted, whereupon Tlaib obnoxiously turned the approval down. A complete setup. The only real winner here is Tlaib's grandmother. She doesn't have to see her now. And uh, I know that uh, the way people feel about President Trump, but um, you know, that's very funny to me. I, I think I <laughs> Like think that's actually a, funny? Like hysterical. Or? Yeah, that it's like the only winner is the grandmother who doesn't have to see her now. I, it's just because it's like, oh, that's, you know, because that would be like, I don't know, if Jimmy Kimmel made that joke, that's pretty funny. But it's just coming from the president, so it gets a little bit funny. It's on a sliding scale. It's like, that's funny to me. But... 
you know, obviously left out of, of the tweet is the fact that it was, you can come see your grandmother, but then, you know, if you do that, you're not allowed to, while you're here, speak out against our country, mm -hmm. which again, seems logical to me, but, uh, you know, I, I don't, I, you know, maybe to try and quell the free speech of Israeli citizens is a different issue, but people who come visit, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't you know, I mean, you know, try speaking out against the Chinese government when you go visit China, you know, and just see how that goes for mm -hmm. you, no matter, you know, no matter what government then, you're there then representing. the next argument could be, do we give China as much money as we give to Israel? Well, I mean, we don't really give China money. Right. Uh, China, China. There was we, a trick question. Yeah, we owe, we owe China, I mean, uh -huh. all of our money. Yeah. Right. Like, every dollar that gets printed mm -hmm. should actually, you know, actually have, maybe even hidden somewhere in that little diamond with the eye on the back that's the, that they say is the Illuminati. Yeah. There's probably something in there. There's like a little red book of Mao, but because it's all green, you can't really see it. So, but, yeah, I mean... <laughs> You know, I, I think that... Uh, I think that's a difference, no? Well, I, th I think that is a difference. But I, I was just saying that uh, I, I understand saying, it's like, all right, look, we're, we're not without compassion. You want to see your grandma. She's in her 90s. I forget exactly how old she is, but she's I'm, old. So it's like, yeah, you don't know when you're going to get to see her again. And also uh, you didn't will, pre will President Biden let you go? <laughs> By the way, I mean President Jill Biden. Will President Jill Biden let President you go? Dr. Dr. Jill yeah. Yeah. Biden. President yeah. Dr. Or would it be Dr. President Dr. Jill Biden? <laughs> let us know in the chat. Is it President Dr. Jill Biden or Dr. President Jill Biden? Or just Doc Prez, by the way. That would be that, that sure. That's a great Twitter. I wonder if somebody's got yeah. at Doc Prez or at Prez, or Doc. Prez Doc. What were you going to say? I don't remember. It's all right. It was <laughs> oh, I do. I remember. I mean, I, I know that you had this whole analogy to would you invite me over to your house as if I was talking crap about you. But I think the better analogy. No, I wouldn't invite you to my house. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> I've never spoken crap, and I've still not been invited. So I guess you know it doesn't matter either way. <laughs> and yet every year I get invited to your birthday party. <laughs> it's true. I always get invited. Yeah. yeah, even though he talks. So I think we actually have a real life, you yeah. know, answer to this hypothetical of yours. But I think you keep a bad house. That's really what it is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've never even seen your house. Nope. What were you actually going to say? I was going to say that a, a better analogy to, yeah. to this would be you have, like, a best friend, and your I, best... I wish, by the way. <laughs> I wish I had a best friend. Oh, man, this is yeah. so sad. Yeah. This just made a really sad turn. Why do you think quick. I do so many shows here? <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Okay, well... But let's say hypothetically. Yes, you know, I have an imaginary yes. friend. Right. Yeah. yeah. And your friend... Um, is is starting to be you know unkind. You can even say pretty harsh with with people. Sure. Do you always have to s like say that what your BFF is doing the r the right thing just because they're your BFF, or should you be able to say, hey, look, what you're doing over here is not right. Let's take a look at this. Let's, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from, but the end result, and I understand you're being attacked, but, you know, we right. have to figure this out because this is this is not okay. So the question is, can you ever call out your best friend? Uh, is, by any chance, is my best friend the crown prince of Saudi Arabia? Because if no, it is, not. then I'm definitely not going <laughs> to, no. I'm going to be like, great guy. <laughs> Love that guy. Right. He's the no. best. Yeah, no, no. okay. So this is more just my best friend. You know, look, you, you think you should be able to, like like most wisdom that I have in my head, I take from the film Love Story, so I'll paraphrase that. You know, being best friends means never having to say I'm sorry. But in real life, if and you tell... Love Story actually, no. She, she, isn't that what she says? Loves but, me. Okay, I but when it. she was on Oprah, like 10 years ago she said that that's the worst line ever so she took it back the actress but she didn't write it that's true but yeah. she denounced she's just it. an actress I but did, she, <laughs> she denounced disavowed her the, yeah. yes exactly uh, Scott you have friends no, no. Uh, no. It's so I, tough but Chelsea's if I the did, only one friend. yeah but if no. you did I mean I th for me is this not the best analogy can you call a best friend out and still be their best friend but here's the thing does that yes can, like, a lot of times you know look we've all known people who are dating someone that's wrong for them right. and you know that you should tell them and then sometimes and maybe one of your other friends speaks up first and then that friend gets cut out of the you know it's like oh I don't, I'm not that person's friend anymore and that's that goes that's not a gender specific thing that's that you know men are just mm -hmm. as capable of not wanting to hear that the person that they're dating is one of the worst people ever walked the face of the earth. They mm -hmm. just don't want to hear. It. So yes. yes. Uh, okay, fine. I get why you may so want people to might be, be afraid. Silent That's what I'm that. saying. People might be afraid of but, what it'll do to the relationship. Sure. But when people, when it's a life and death issue, sure. Then I think you have to. I mean, if you knew, oh, like this was a real 
uh, thread on Reddit once. Um, a father posted that his daughter is a sociopath and he was wondering whether he had the obligation to inform her fiance. Hmm. So, yeah. So, you know, that one gets a little dicier, right? It depends I mean, on how much you want her out of the house. I think that that's <laughs> probably the correct answer. I mean, if this, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend of your friend was, you know, had the, the, capacity to kill, maybe you might feel yeah. a little bit more strongly that you should say something even if it threatens a friendship. Right. Yeah, that's fair. But I mean, you know, that's like that's an actual threat to your life. If it's like, wow, they've been to, they've been engaged for a year and a half and they've been dating for six years and somehow she he, he's never figured about out about her chronic gas that she has. I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna rock the boat. Right. Let him find that out once they move in together. That's fine. Right. Nobody's gonna <laughs> probably die. But when they're, when they're, mm-hmm. when it's a matter Talk of life Tuesday. and death, then I think that you should speak out. Well, and and you may have to get loud if right. the best friend isn't listening. But I would say that that's I've actually for, done that. You've spoken out to your best friend. I I was really really close with somebody, right. and I I thought that they were making very dangerous financial decisions. Right. And I didn't stop talking about it. Right. Um, and in the end, it costs the friendship. But I, myself, if I would have seen this person drive off the financial cliff and I didn't say anything and, like, you know, be the only person in this person's life trying to, like, say, hey, wrong way, like, don't, and I just watched that person go off the edge, I would feel like, well, that would have made me a bad friend anyway. Much better of me to warn this person and to, give it everything I've got before I see them go off the edge. So we're talking about best friends here, but uh, I would say uh, Omar and uh, and Talib, not really friends of Israel. But the United United States is. Sure. And so as representatives of the United States, they are calling out something that to us is a very close ally. Right. But I mean, it's like, look, if... Well, I was going to say if Chuck Schumer said the same things, but that, that doesn't make sense. But, you know, if you just if you pick, you know, a completely other ethnicities, you just you know, two white men say the same things and they made the same decision. It's like, yeah, well, we don't we don't we don't want you here. Uh, so I don't know. Let us know what you think. We spend a lot of time on this mm-hmm. and we have to talk about Greenland. So uh, I want <laughs> oh, to. No, we don't. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, we do. I've, I, I, I'm getting a Kickstarter uh, off the ground because uh, I want to be a, I want to help us by Greenland. And as we ridiculous as that sounds, President Trump is not the first president to ask about this. That's the most surprising thing about it. Uh, Harry Truman and either Andrew Jackson or Andrew Johnson. Sorry, I don't have it in front of me. It's one of those guys. All right, so probably you, would have been Johnson because this is not really an Andrew would, Jackson yeah, thing. I, I, yeah. I we know what, so, we, we know what Andrew Jackson was up to. But, it wasn't uh, buying Greenland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, there, I mean, because the reason was, especially for Truman, was the fact that there's uh, a lot of good reasons to be have that property if you're going to sure. call it that because of, of being in the north atlantic uh for for air bases and and nato and um so it's more of a strategic thing than just to have the property which i think for trump is that's it's the a, joke tweet that he posted yesterday about having a trump tower and but wait, not particularly funny i no. thought the one about uh, about talib's grandmother that was funny but the the picture i'm just like no except know, the best part was uh talib's grandmother Going back and saying, "May God ruin him." <laughs> yeah, wow, that's true. It's like don't well, mess hey, with a, the way, with a, by, uh, by way, an elderly grandmother. Yeah, also funny, you yeah. know. So, uh, yeah, but I mean, so the reason why it's worth talking about is because, as, as ridiculous as it sounded when I saw those headlines, I'm like, oh, well, you know, they've we've heard all about things that get taken off of his desk, uh, President Trump's desk. You know, we've heard we've had various people. Uh, Mattis was one. I forget who else has said, but there are things that they just don't let him see, you know, and. And I think that this seemed like one of those, but then, but then, it's so funny to talk about uh, the fact that uh, Larry Kudlow is a, a, an advisor <laughs> mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. the the White House because you know he used to do a TV show with Jim Cramer, mm-hmm. and uh, well, when, when basically when is uh, uh, Jim Cramer going to be Secretary of the Treasury? That's really what I'm asking here. <laughs> but so uh, you know, and uh, I don't know. As soon as you say Greenland's not for sale, you're like that. 
I mean, Everything has to, has a price. Yeah, she said it has yeah. to be. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, it's like so. We've got the we've got the U.S. Virgin Islands. So these, I don't know. I was gonna say be... we haven't even taken care of Puerto Rico. We haven't taken. You know, we have right. U.S. Virgin Islands. We have a lot of uh, South Pacific. I mean, we haven't even taken uh, care islands. of Arkansas. Let's be honest. You know? And then <laughs> so, yeah, so that's why the whole thing is even more ridiculous when you can't even take care of uh, outlying territories. Yeah. And now you're going to say you want to. So your Alaska's vote is Alaska's not doing that well either. Right. Alaska's I mean, making, everybody yeah. lives in Alaska gets that check every year for but the, still, they're for not the oil doing, sales. They're, yeah. they're still not doing they're gonna well. They're going to recall their uh, Republican governor. Are they really? They're, they're yeah, getting the signatures for that. And it's, uh, you know, I don't follow things. Uh, I, I'm a, I'm a uh, contiguous 48 guy. <laughs> Governor, not Sarah Palin, right? No. Okay. Is it... Uh, ben Levy. It, it's way after, because, you know, after her lieutenant became governor, then they had independent Bill Walker, who didn't run for re-election, and, and then we ended up winning. Will Bristol Palin become <laughs> the uh, governor? Of, uh, just, these, these are the important questions. Well, like Greenland, there's not many people there, so I guess you don't have to go around and you can visit every single person pretty much and get there. Well, you know, speaking of Alaska, we know that that is uh, referred to historically as Seward's Folly. If we bought Greenland. That was Johnson, by the way. Right. That was in the 1860s. So whose yeah. folly would uh, Greenland be? Would it be? Would Trump get his name on that? Would it be Trump's folly? <laughs> or... Uh, but you just feel like it, it's, it, you know, there, there's so many better ways to direct our resources that buying Greenland really shouldn't be one of them. Is that is that where you're coming down? Well, on this? at this I point, mean, I can't with, believe with, I haven't heard people. But where are we supposed to get the money for this? Right. Everything? Well, I, I was just going to say with, with climate change, I, I actually have a friend that's doing research right now in Greenland. And I was just imagining if there's it turns, you know, the ice caps melt and everything else. There'll be nothing but water anyway. So that's a folly in itself. Why would you want to purchase something if the land's going to go away? This is a great find by Ryan in the booth for those watching on YouTube. It's a uh, political cartoon, clearly from uh, from that time period. Yep. And uh, Alaska being referred to as Russian America. Mm -hmm. So really, Russians been interfering all the way. They've, yes, since they've, the 1860s. They've put land as part of our country. Uh, by the way, just to uh, backtrack, uh, in the chat... A great friend, Storage Yard resident, says, I will be Christian's best friend as soon as he votes for Trump. <laughs> well, Are you open well, I guess to I'm that out. kind well, of corruption? Let's, <laughs> let's say uh, you show me a ballot that says uh, Trump de Blasio. Whew. Let's see. Let's see where. Let's see how hard that decision is. <laughs> so much New York. <laughs> yeah, and yes, it was. It was definitely Harry Truman. But we were talking about the. In addition to Harry Truman, yeah, Andrew Johnson. It was Andrew Johnson, yeah. which obviously uh, makes more sense. And uh, our Scott Brown says, uh, "We'll just say, darn, I'm late." Uh, that's ten demerits, our Scott Brown. You should uh, always be punctual. Honestly, I've closed the door. You should not be allowed to sit down and join the rest of the class. But uh, and then he does have a funny uh, follow up. Chelsea, I think Mexico is supposed to pay for Greenland. So, oh. there you go. so all of a sudden it all right. makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. <laughs> good, very uh, good. So I, uh, I made a light of it at the top of the show. Perhaps you heard, if you're not our Scott Brown, maybe you heard. But uh, Jill Biden did tell a group of voters in New Hampshire that Joe Biden is the, uh, the best chance to beat Donald Trump. I'm not saying she's... Definitely wrong. <laughs> uh, I you know, just maybe a couple more debates like the last one though. That's that's not going to help. Yeah. You know, if he can figure out the difference between a website and uh, and texting. But you know, he's he, look. He would be he would be what eighty two at the end of a first term. <laughs> yes. So let's be honest. Yeah. You know, he's he, even older than Trump. I mean, he, right. yeah. But Bernie's older than he is, and yeah. and you know, I, I make fun of Bernie a lot. Bernie seems much younger than both of them. You know, and yeah. and I don't know. It's just because maybe because he's always being so loud and he's so like fiery and he's got he's got such passion. Those guys are like uh, I don't know. You know, I mean, I, I think Biden just. He didn't even realize that they were making him run for president. You know, it's just he's just like, wait, no, I, I already did that. No, you were vice president. I was. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I was president. But uh, so the idea that uh, you know it'd be a little bit of a bitter pill. Uh, we would just have to suck it up and vote for uh, Joe Biden. I I think that look, if it comes down to a, a ballot of Joe Biden, Donald Trump. I think a lot of people are like, well, yeah, I, I guess that's who I'm going for. Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Bill de Blasio is a different conversation. <laughs> but what do you think about Dr. Jill Biden's comments about about why basically everyone in New Hampshire needs to vote for her husband? It sounded kind of pathetic. Keep in mind she's a doctor. <laughs> You know, I have learned in running around court that judges mm -hmm. and lawyers and even the doctors, <laughs> at least the ones, many of the ones that I have come across in this system who I get to depose, 
are not any smarter than you or I. Yeah, I know we don't. I, don't, I know we don't agree on, on some things, but I definitely agree with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's like that's like you know the, your your friend who goes to like a way better college than you do. You know, I, I, I had a friend who went to Cornell, and I would meet his friends. And I'm like, wait, these people are idiots. Like they're some of the least intelligent people I've ever met. But it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like some of these people now have like PhD next to their name. Right. You know? So so my question is. Like, why would she say that now? I mean, I can get saying that later, like when mm-hmm. he's the nominee, and to say, look, I get it. Maybe you're not the most passionate about him, and somebody who you supported in the primary is not the nominee. But here we are now, and 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 then those comments would have made sense. To, to try and... To say it now, it just seems kind of well, weird especially when she was like maybe you like somebody else's maybe somebody else's health care plan is better okay well then why doesn't he get make a better plan mm-hmm. right um I, it, it just uh and joe biden on health care actually really bothers me because in one of the debates was it a debate or it may have just been an interview comment well, he, he thought said, it was a debate it doesn't matter yeah really. he said <laughs> we can deal with the insurance companies mm-hmm. and I, think that, he, I think that wasn't and a debate, that just actually. made me go like are you for real dude have you been around <laughs> we can deal with the insurance companies mm-hmm. no the insurance companies deal with you so the fact that he just thinks that he can manage them that he doesn't understand how much more powerful they are than him just shows that he doesn't get it and it makes me cringe uh, about him even more when he says that to me that's like a bigger gaffe than some of these sillier Stupid like things, you know yeah. I was vice president during Parkland you know whatever mm-hmm. something like we can ha- I can handle the insurance right. companies makes him sound a whole lot more like not in touch um, than those other things um, you know I, I was just like okay I I, I understand that for most of Americans, it's like 54%, the highest priority is can we beat Trump. But if we have to beat Trump with a president who is going to continue the the strain of corrupt democracy and capitalism than we have now is just um, a degree or two less Bad. So what you're Donald saying Trump. is that you might as well just leave Trump in office and uh, not have I mean, Joe Biden. I think that sounded like an endorsement to George Ed resident. <laughs> <laughs> put that in your diary. Things like you know child separation and dismantling you know the EPA and the CPFB, like you know a lot of these important um, agencies and, and work and, that we're doing. And judges and, and keep, LGBT rights and so yeah, many other oh things. Oh my God, the judges. Know, like, yes, the judges and the Supreme know. Court. It mm-hmm. was If it wasn't for all that, I would say um, yes. Like, But because those things are so um, dangerous for us in the long term, then yeah, that's why I would, in the end, vote for Joe Biden. But mm-hmm. I don't want to have to be told, like, come on, just just get behind him now. He's the good backup. Uh, do, it, do it for Uncle Joe. <laughs> well, you know, Scott, to Chelsea's point about why right now, here's a theory, that she had the last couple debates, you know, on DVR. She hadn't had a chance to watch, and she just saw them. <laughs> and she's like, come on, guys. This is, he's a good guy. He's just, well, believe me, he means well. well See, uh, he probably means well, but oh, he I, just I do, doesn't he, even look, know. I, I, and, you know, you, you probably disagree, but I think in his mind, I think President Trump means well. If, it's just the way that he processes how to do well is, you know, what was that, 54% of the country, you know, but that other 46 is like, yeah, it's not so bad. I think I think, he, Biden, I think Trump means well for himself and, and all that. But, yeah, I, I, I believe that she probably looked at it as, yes, it was too soon, but too early to say it. But I think she was, she didn't say it correctly, but she was trying to, you know, part of the issue is with a lot of uh, Democratic voters is, like, he's too moderate and kind of like you were saying, mm-hmm. Chelsea, he's going to continue a lot of the same practices that Trump has done and some of the more moderate to right Democrats that are allowing the the corruptness to continue and that it's not much of a change and you're not getting the generational change and you're not getting the liberal things that a lot of uh, Democratic voters are very eager for. And so I think it was her way of being able to say, okay, look, he's not going to be the the most liberal, stop doing the purity test and let's get the person that we think is going to best beat you know, Donald Trump and that's Maybe we'll get some of those moderate Republicans who are repulsed by him. Maybe we'll get the older voters. So I think she was looking at that to some of the other voters of Democrats that are very passionate, which I believe they should be, 
and I think it was a little awkward timing for her to do that, but I think her intention was saying, like, look, you may not agree with him purity test-wise 100%, but instead of sitting out the vote or not voting for Hillary because of Bernie in 2016, let's just get behind him now because he's going to, you know, clean up against Donald Trump. So I think that was her way of doing it, even though I think it was too soon and right. it was wrong. I, that her intention was don't be focused on the purity test, even though you may not agree with him. He's better than Donald Trump and he'll be able to beat Donald Trump, which and you, when you, you can agree with or not. But. And when you talk about people repulsed by Donald Trump, you're talking about beyond just people who saw that uh, photo of him getting the spray tan <laughs> because... I mean that that was one of the most repulsive things that I've that ever seen. That was worse than them holding the <laughs> the uh, it's just orphaned a ju- it's baby just, right, with, with the thumbs, thumbs up. Chelsea, well, that Chelsea most, thumbs of, up. most of what I say is a joke. Okay. I want to ask you a quick question. You yes, can, so. I yield my time. Speaking of Joe Biden, I yield my time to the distinguished gentleman from Delaware, please. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Ryan Nelson uh, producing the show in the booth. I. I'm from Delaware. I met Bo- Joe Biden a few times. I just wanted to ask you guys a quick question about um, this idea that he might be out of touch and. I, even hearing you talking about this, it was getting me a little anxious. Do you think it's more of a he just hasn't kept up with things going on in the times, or do you think it's an age thing? And which one of those do you think it I, is? I vote guys. for he. He has somehow been so consumed in the establishment of politics that he doesn't even recognize the corruption for what it is, or just I, yeah. I, I mean, I think I completely agree. So I, I think separate from that, I'm just more talking about what's been happening in these recent. Uh, debates where he you know he's running for president and he's just there's been blanks he's been messing up words it's just getting me like a little yeah i would say that stuff has a lot more to do with just you know look age hits people very differently i do think it's because he's old but in terms of his out of touch i think that you can look how long has he been in politics he's been in a bubble he's been in a bubble i'm 43 he's been in a bubble for longer than my entire life okay so and i think you do get it look the the example that we saw it's again because i'm old so it's an old example but in 1992 uh, george hw bush just not uh, just being amazed that there was a scanner, the scanner in the, the supermarket. Grocery store, yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, yeah, of course he didn't need mm-hmm. to do any shopping. I mean, God, he was the director of the FBI before he was vice president. No, that guy's not going to go do the grocery shopping. You know, this is, you know, my grandfather probably didn't know what that is because my grandmother always did the grocery right. shopping. I'm not saying it's right. right. I'm just <laughs> saying that that's what it is, though. So it's like, yeah, and it's it's sort of like that. And. You know, yeah, but when you have a plug for your website, and, and it, I, I assume it's on a teleprompter in front of you, you should be able to read it. And, you know, the example that we've heard a lot lately is the one about being confused that he met with the survivors of the Parkland shooting. And there's a very sort of easy way to just kind of explain that one away, because as tragic as it is, how many right. how many uh, survivors of shooting or people who lost people? You know, how many of those meetings did he have? So yeah, he's he had the wrong one, but you know, how many did he actually go to? And it's like there's there's no win in making that clarification. I think that there's definitely other times where it's like the people who work for him are doing a lot of damage control. Yeah, a little I, both a little. Well, yeah, I think a, it's a little bit a little both. both say, and I, I would say beyond the age thing because. Uh, I've met him too. <laughs> We're gonna no. It sounds like Trump. Right, like everybody's met. No, but great. Not Have you me. met but, Gavin either? But Just I would say Elizabeth. I did meet Bill Clinton. But anyway, go ahead. He is a great Ooh, personable. Interesting. He, he is a great campaigner in that sense. But I think beyond the age thing, which is a factor, um, he's also a little bit rusty too because he's been out of you know being yeah. vice president and being out in public every day but I think and actually, campaigning in the, the past like that could work for him because years. so many people when i hear you know men talking about trump one of the things they say about him is he's just a guy mm-hmm. he's just a regular guy like me who slips up and doesn't mm-hmm. say the perfect thing and isn't perfectly polished well he's I a mean, regular guy which with is, his name on casinos <laughs> which mean, is I, why they like george w bush i mean it's that I same guess kind that's, of thing I, yeah. I mean if if uh, th- th- that would also describe Joe Biden. But He's I think just that, a Joe yeah. who's like me, who forgets things and says silly things and messes up. So is that going to make him more endearing? Well, I think that's why to, he he was endearing to begin with, and that's why people liked him from the beginning when he was when he was Obama's running mate. It was in two thousand eight and in twenty twelve. It was the same thing because he was that kind of regular guy. He was goofy. He was you know. And he did appeal to a lot of people, and that's why I think going back to what Dr. Jill Biden was saying is that <laughs> she's saying is that he appeals to more than just the left Democrats. He will appeal to the moderate Republicans. He would and, appeal to me if he would just say about, you know about this 
this corruption. Mm-hmm. Hey, I've seen it myself for 30, right. 40 years. I've seen what is is pouring sand to the grinders of our democracy. Right, and I think a lot of times you run into people that, uh, you know, just especially somebody that's been in politics as long as Joe Biden, it's it's not in your nature to say, yeah, I was wrong about that. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know. But I mean, how with, refreshing with, would that be, would in, be. in contrast so the, to Trump? You know, the issue that uh, Kamala Harris got a lot of attention for in the first debate. The that's crime that, bill. right, but yeah. that's a great answer. It's like, yeah. yeah, you know, that was a long time ago. I I feel very differently about it now. I've I've evolved. I'm a different person. But mm-hmm. he didn't say any of that because mm-hmm. he comes from the thinking of like when he's just like I was right then and I'm right now and you know and, and, never and, meant fault. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and I think that uh, that's something to see. So I mean, this this next debate, and oh, I just I really hope it's on one night. <laughs> it just, I mean, I, too. It, it, even if it's fourteen people, just just one night, please. I, I can't. I just I can't know, the do three it. Three hour. Yeah. And like I was each. saying before the show, it can be any fourteen. people. I don't even care if they're all ready for president. Just put fourteen people on the stage, but <laughs> just one night. But I think it, it's you know really what he, he has to take into consideration, and the. Yeah, I saw some polling uh, from uh, CNN, which some of you in our viewership know as fake news CNN, but <laughs> yeah. either way, it's still there. And uh, there was, was the latest polling that showed, you know, Joe Biden still the, the front runner. And I don't know if it was like 65 plus or 55 plus, but with like the oldest demographic, it was like he was so far ahead of everybody else. You know, mm-hmm. it was like the, the little chart was like, mm-hmm. you know, like twice. Of right. The, the, you know, and I think. That it's just like you know maybe maybe for older people like yeah I get confused sometimes too it's all right Joe don't worry about it and hey you're actually younger than me this is great <laughs> well yeah there's that too and they're like you know it's like yeah you know Mayor Pete is just a, he's a little too young yeah you know, he's, he's gonna be th- the perfect VP yeah. yeah he's only thirty seven it's like Mayor Pete this, this you know it's all right but. You know, I mean, look, it's a, it's a it's a real thing. I mean, about just you know, when you take the politics out of it, when you talk about the people who honestly are most likely to be nominees and be elected president, you have Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, uh, all of them in their seventies, and some of them would be in their eighties during the next term as president, and. You know, and then you have like a guy like Cory Booker is only 50 and you're like, oh, my God, he's so young. Yeah. What about that? You know, which is so funny that, you know, well, now I'm 43, 50 does not sound old. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, and it, it's just right. like, yeah, the, to me, that seems like the perfect age. Oh, Mayor Pete, you know, you'll be fine. You can you, you can time. run in a few years. Mm-hmm. But, uh, it, you know, but then, you know, well, Cory Booker, I, I, I don't think uh, I don't know. He's not, he doesn't seem to be polling in the right direction. What were you going to well, say? Well, no, Scott? I was going to say, and I think, again, who are the likely voters at this point? And it is older people. And so. If those and and far and away Biden leads far and away with yeah. older voters and that's the thing they're the ones that are going to go out to vote so they're the ones that are going to end up shaping who's the nominee unless we can get younger voters and people to really come out in force which they didn't do in 2016 but 2018 they did come around so yeah this maybe is why younger my voters whole strategy around. is just that fine let's give Biden presidency <laughs> and we just have to have a br- very progressive. Democrats take over the Senate and and, and, and cabinet and, and appoint people that are going to be you know yeah because I, I I would like to think I hope and pray that if Congress puts in front of him a bill that's more progressive than something he ran on that he would sign it mm-hmm. yeah I think yeah, if I Dr think so. Jill tells him to sign it he probably <laughs> I will think so. no I do th- I do agree with you I think he I would mean even maybe something that's in the direction of Medicare for all mm-hmm. yeah I think so. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of everybody mm-hmm. trying to out-Medicare each other in the last debate. God, and, and please, they need to stop. Please. Mm-hmm. Well, Pe- ple- mm-hmm. I, I even heard, I even got, like, a rung or two lower in support for Bernie because I recently heard him on the Joe Rogan podcast and it was all in the weeds about Medicare for All. Well, Joe Rogan podcast, obviously it was all in the weeds. Thank you! <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I had to step on it to get the joke. Out. But anyway, I set you up very well. Right? Thought, sorry. And in the whole time, it was it was literally about you know the issues and sort of I didn't hear him ever get to the crux, which is we need to clean up the corruption first, which then will allow for anything better than what we have now. Otherwise, you're just going to have like Obama did with the ACA. You muscle it through, and then. Everybody spends the next decade fighting it, and it's mm-hmm. not going to be uh, reliable. And we're entrusting the government, who right now most of us don't have much faith in, mm-hmm. with something so precious as health care. It doesn't make sense, even to me. Right. Pretty progressive. Yeah. So um, so that's why I'm like, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit, even though I thought it was pathetic sounding, and not, I'm a little bit in agreement with Joe Biden. Like, all right, fine, but can we please freaking focus on the Senate? 
Well, I mean, oh, I think, yes. I think when it gets, yes. yeah, when it, yeah, exactly. I think That's that uh, there, there Every, ought to be a little bit more focus on that at yes, this point because absolutely. You, and who you, is it, Hickenlooper? Hickenlooper. I've said from the beginning, Hickenlooper. Uh, Bullock should run in Montana. I, Beto should run in Texas. Like, let's get. Although Democrats Beto to... saying he never would really annoyed me. Yeah, but look, those are the those are the, I mean, the races Beto, they should yeah, be Beto focused would on. Win an election, and I think yeah. he doesn't. Senate, he doesn't. He doesn't think that's in his skill set right now. The Senate you know? is, is key to everything because if we don't have the Senate, then it's going to be the same yes. thing again. Where everything's Mitch going to be blocked. McConnell out. I would be more yes. excited for Mitch McConnell out and Joe Biden and yes. VP Mayor Pete. Yeah. I, sure. I, sure. Well, there you go. Sign me up. We uh, are. Uh, we do have to leave it right there, as they say, yeah. because we are out of time. But uh, tune in next week, where we will discuss which non-Latino candidates fake Spanish will be most entertaining oh, in yeah, the upcoming yeah. debate. Also, Antifa is that a school abstinence program? And Marianne Williamson is she for real? We'll talk about that yeah. and more on the next installment of the Trump Report. But until then. Scott Moore, where do people find you? You can find me on Twitter at SMAN80. And me at Chelsea Glacia. And you can find me at Christian DMZ. Thank you to everyone in the chat. Thank you, Ryan, in the booth. We will see you all next Tuesday at 4 Pacific, 7 Eastern. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV.